we'll talk about another force and that is the tension force now usually the tension force is associated with strings let me give you an example suppose I have a ceiling over here and to this ceiling there is a string attached and to this string there is a mass a block that is held by the string let's say the block has a mass M then here's a question we know that there's a gravitational force acting on this block which is pulling it downwards yet the block is not accelerating it's it's just standing there so there must be some force countering gravity there must be a force upwards which force do you think that is it's the force of tension the way it works is like the follows you see you can imagine that this string is made up of tiny 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 parts so imagine you have one part here you have another part here you have another part here here this way like so many parts this way you can imagine these individual parts are held together by intermolecular forces and eventually we end up with this big mass over here like so now notice that there is a gravitational force acting on this block let's let's put mg using blue so there is mg now what's going to happen is because there's an intermolecular force between the string and this particular block this string will put a force back on the block upwards and that's going to be the tension force and i'm going to use green in this example to depict the tension force this way but <clears throat> remember newton's third law if the string puts a tension force on the block the block puts a tension force back on the string so the block is pulling this chunk of the string down with the tension force t I hope you don't get confused. These two tension forces don't cancel each other out. If you are worrying about the block, then only the tension force, this tension force and Mg are acting. If you consider this part of the string, then there's another tension force down acting, that's T. But then what's gonna happen is, this string is gonna pull this guy up with the force T. So the total force on the string becomes zero because there are two tension forces acting on the opposite direction. And I can do the same thing on this guy. Since this guy is pulling this fellow up, this fellow will pull this guy down. So there's a tension force T acting down on this fellow. And similarly, this guy will pull him up with the tension force T. And notice that everywhere the tension is going to remain exactly the same. T. That's the whole idea behind the tension force. Notice that the tension force is a pulling force. Each bit of the string is being pulled with some force T. And we can now evaluate how much that force is supposed to be. Let's, let's put F equals MA for this block. So I'm going to call this as the Y direction. I'm going to say Sigma F in the Y should be equal to mass times the acceleration in the oops Y direction. There are two forces acting in the Y direction. There's a tension force acting upwards and there's an MG acting downwards on this fellow. So there's a minus sign because it's downwards. It should be equal to mass times acceleration, but there is no acceleration. As I told you, it's just standing still. So tension must be equal to mg. This is not always the case. It's it's the case in this this particular example. Okay, and uh, we're gonna always assume, or at least most of the time, we're gonna assume that the strings are massless. Okay, and if the strings are massless, the tension force everywhere in the string must be exactly the same. It should remain exactly the same. So that's one thing to remember. All right, so let's take another example. <clears throat> Imagine we are inside an elevator, like so, and we have two blocks attached to the elevator. With the help of a string, let's call it as M1 and M2. Okay, and the entire elevator is accelerating up with an acceleration of G by 2. And the question are, what is that? This, this is string 1 and this is string 2. What is the tension in T1, that's the string 1, and what is the tension T2 in the string 2? Okay, now you can do the physics from an inertial reference frame, that is, standing outside the elevator, 
or you can do it from inside the elevator. That's non inertial reference frame. Uh, I prefer to do it from the non inertial reference frame because A, I know how to do it. So, yeah. But more importantly, from the inertial reference frame, everything is at rest. And I love being at rest because there are no accelerations, the whole thing seems to be in equilibrium. So, let's go to the non inertial reference frame. Let's go to the reference frame of the elevator and solve this. So, from that point of view, these guys are just stationary. So there's M1 and there's M2. Okay. Now let's try and draw all the forces that are going to act on these guys. Clearly there's a force M2G acting over here and on this guy there's M1G. What other forces? Well, tension obviously. This string is going to pull this guy up just like what we saw before. So there's going to be tension force T1 over here. And this string is going to pull this guy up. So there's a tension force T2 here. But notice that the tension force everywhere in the string is exactly the same. Remember what we did last time? And if this was the ceiling, because the tension force is same everywhere, even this particular last part of the string is going to pull on the ceiling down with the tension force T. And you can pretty much understand this because you can sort of understand if this was too heavy, the ceiling would break. I mean, in extreme cases, right? So, because of that, even over here, the string is going to pull down on this particular block. Remember, tension force is always a pulling force so it's it's gonna pull everywhere so there's a pull down and tension must be the same because it's a massless string so there's a tension t2 acting over here so we are now ready to apply equations Ooh, i almost forgot this is not g this is i have to add the fake gravity how could i ever forget uh remember i have to add fake gravity and that is g by 2 and I'm adding that because the fake gravity is in the opposite direction by now I'm pretty sure you are trained with this concept okay let's now apply Newton's second law to both these masses I'm gonna take upwards is positive so for mass 1 I will get Sigma F Y equal to M A Y and there are two forces acting and there are three forces acting there's a tension force acting upwards there's a tension force t2 acting downwards and there's a m1 3g by 2 so there's also downwards so m1 into 3g divided by 2 should be equal to zero because from our point of view there are no accelerations so this is going to be equation number one for us okay if i apply this same thing to second block so let me <clears throat> okay so let me apply this to block number two and now I would see there are two forces one is T2 acting upwards and there's a, a minus M2 into 3G divided by 2 and that should be equal to zero again because no accelerations so this is equation number two. Oh, notice that equation number two or directly gives me the tension force so that tension is going to be uh, 3m2g divided by 2 so we got our first answer and what we'll do now is we'll substitute this guy over here so t1 minus t2 which is 3m2g by 2 minus 3m1 g by 2 equal to 0 so from this I have my answer <clears throat> so t1 is I can take all the common stuff out I can take 3 g by 2 out and then I get m1 plus m2 Ta -da! now you could have done this actually very fast you know why first of all see it makes sense that t2 is smaller than t1 in the T1, I have 3G M2 by 2 plus 3G M1 by 2. That makes sense, right? Because this string not only has to support the weight of this guy, but he also has to support the weight of that guy. Or at least in our, uh, 
what do we say in our traditional language or our trivial language we would say that but as long as physics is concerned don't think that this string is bearing the weight of m1 and m2 instead it's much it's it's much better and you know it's more accurate to think of it that this guy is pulling the string and and the string is in turn pulling this fellow remember this this is the way we're going to do physics everywhere we're not going to say that m1 is carrying the weight of m2 or tension t1 is uh, this this string is carrying the weight of m2 we're going to do it systematically this way so that you know we don't use our uh, wrong notions like this and go wrong okay so that's about tensions and again non-inertial reference frames see you next time